Hi everyone, Rob here again from the Department of Education at Cape Breton University. In this video, we're going to take a quick look at some of the basics of using discussion forums in Moodle. From time to time, you are going to be asked by your instructors to post uh, some responses to some questions in a discussion forum in Moodle. Or you may need to post a question yourself if you're looking for some help from one of your instructors. So. Here is an example of a discussion forum. This is the icon that you would need to look for in Moodle. This is my demo forum. I'm going to just click on this and you can see once we get in here, there are no discussion posts yet. So I'm the first student to jump in here and start a discussion thread for this week's discussions. I'm just going to click on add a new discussion topic. If there was already a post here, there would be a nice little button. I could respond to that post simply by hitting uh, the reply button. I'm going to click on add a new discussion topic and make sure you give it a short but meaningful subject. So this is going to be my demonstration post. And now I'm going to use the text editor to add my message. So if you've only got the one toolbar showing up here and you want some more formatting options, simply click on this button up here in the corner. It's called the toggle toolbar button. It will give you more formatting options. You can click on this little uh, corner down here. You can drag it and resize your uh, text editing window if you need a little bit more space to work. So I'm just going to add some text in here. And uh, you have options to change the formatting for your text. Let's say I wanted to put in a little heading in here. I can simply type the words from my heading, click on my drop down here. I can do any formatting that I want, and I have a nice little heading put in and my basic text. Now, oftentimes, you're probably going to want to attach a file with your work. Uh, you're uploading something that you want to share with the instructor or with your students. You will see uh, sometimes an attachment window down here at the bottom. If you don't see that, Click on that advanced button and now you'll see the attachment. You can find the file on your computer. I have a uh, sample paper here. Maybe I want to share that with the class. And it's too big for the maximum file size. So let's see if I can find a smaller file. That is one of the problems that you're frequently going to run into. Your file may be too small. So I'll share this PDF file here, which is 89 uh, kilobytes. That should be absolutely fine. And now I can share that with the class. But if your file is too big, then what you want to do is type a name right here in your post for it. This is, so this will be my sample paper. And now we're going to add a link to this file. So I'm going to highlight it, click on the link icon on the toolbar. And you'll get a menu box that looks like this, a pop-up window. Click on Browse. You can browse your computer to find that file. And here is my sample paper again. This will give me a much larger file size than that attachment block. And I just need to hit Upload this file. I can select my options here if I wanted to upload, uh, open in this window or another window click on insert and my paper is now linked my classmates or my instructor can read that paper now sometimes you're going to want to embed an image in your uh, in your discussion post again that's easy enough to do just like any uh, online text editor you what you're going to look for is the insert image button and I will find an image to upload Perhaps in this case, I'm going to upload an infographic that I've created for this course. So I'll choose my file, and here is my image file. I can tell it's a PNG. That's one of the image formats. And I will upload this file here. Now, if you're going to upload an image, be sure to add something to the image description. That's the alt text here. That's the text that will show up if the image doesn't load. And if anybody has a visual impairment and is using a screen reader, then it's going to read this text out to them. So be sure to add alt text to that or an image description to it. 
And you can change the size uh, of your image if you want before it uploads as well, too. Uh, just don't uncheck that constraint proportions. I'm going to change this from 750 pixels to just 250 wide. It'll change my height and insert. My image is now inserted. Now, finally, one of the other more common things that you're likely to want to add to one of your discussion posts is a link to a website that you found, an external uh, external link. So I'm going to add one right here. Link to Rob's web page or website. And this could be any site that you found. Maybe it is a... Um, a reading that you found, a, an academic resource, a journal article, something like that that you want to share with the class, or maybe just a nice little website like this. Well, I have uh, a website here that where I have a blog post about using YouTube to share videos. So let's share that website. I'm just going to grab the uh, URL up here from the address bar and copy that. I'm going to come back into my discussion post. Here we go. I have too many windows open. And I am going to highlight what I want to link, just like I did when I was uh, linking my paper up here. And I will click that link button. Again, I will add the URL and click on open in a new window. If I'm linking to a website that is outside of Moodle, I will click open in a new window so that my classmates don't lose their place in the course. Now, a lot of times I see students in courses, what they'll do is they'll just paste the URL in, but they won't link it. It'll just be plain text. You want to make sure that you highlight your text, you click on that link button, and you actually add that link there before you hit save and save and share that post. And if you want to take a quick look, at, once your post is up, you'll see your post is now here in the form. Click my demonstration post. Here is my formatted post with my heading, the link to my paper, the image that I embedded, and the uh, link to the external website. If I click on that, yes, indeed, it does open up in a new page, a new tab for me.